Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, this is the February edition of the New York Natural Heritage Program's monthly IMAP Invasives webinar series. And my name is Mitchell O'Neill. Um, and today we're going to talk about which IMAP data tool, which IMAP data collection tool is best for you. And we're going to hear from uh, a couple PRISM partners as well to, to talk about how they have employed tools. Um, and hopefully this will help people considering their data collection for the summer, figure out which tool is best for you. Um, and just to give you an idea of what we'll talk about today, um, I'll start with a brief introduction. I, I see some new names here, so some people might not be totally familiar with IMAP Invasives. Um, and then we're going to run through what options we have for submitting data to IMAP Invasives. Um, and you'll see that we'll hear from Christopher Williams from the Capital Region Prism, as well as Robert Smith from Slilo about they, how they have employed certain tools for their survey work. Um, and hopefully that will give you some context um, to think about how you might pick the right tool for your project. Um, and I'll also go over um, where you can learn more about each tool. Um, so for, for an hour long webinar, I didn't want to try to train everyone on how to submit data via each of our six options. Um, so instead of being a full training on any particular tool, it's kind of going to be a uh, review of each tool and what situations it might be best for, um, and then leaving you with some resources where you could learn more about the specific tools that you're interested in. And uh, throughout the presentation, please feel free to uh, enter comments into the chat box. Um, so for all six of these tools, I know I see some names that I recognize. There are a lot of people who use various, who use some of these tools. Um, so if there are any points that I'm missing that you're thinking of, maybe certain uh, components of a survey which make it better to do in IMAP Mobile Advanced versus the Survey123, that sort of thing. If you have any sorts of thoughts like that, please feel free to share those as we go along. Um, and just for a brief, brief context for anyone um, who's not so familiar with IMAP Invasives, um, so it's a database used by several states and provinces. In New York, it's the Centralized Invasive Species Database to support PRISMs, state agencies, and other partners working on invasive species issues. So you can view species distributions. Um, there are early detection alerts uh, that people can sign up for. You can track control efforts and results. And of course, the main thing I'll be talking about today is how to report observations to IMAP invasives. And I should also mention that in New York State, IMAP Invasives is administered by the New York State Natural Heritage Program, um, which mostly works on rare species and biodiversity conservation. But since invasives have such an impact on biodiversity, we also manage the invasive species data for the state, um, primarily through IMAP Invasives. And so, um, a lot of this data comes from our partners. Um, originally, a lot of it came in through bulk uploads. So basically importing existing data sets into IMAP invasives. But now it's it, uh, the most important uh, data entry tool in the, the most important data source for data in New York State is uh, incoming data that people collect each year, mostly using our data collection tools. So our mobile apps or the online interface. And thank you to our many partner organizations who have uh, been continually submitting data to IMAP Invasives and helping keep our database current and useful to invasive species managers across the state. Um, and one, one thing I should actually mention about IMAP Invasives, uh, one of the special things about IMAP is that it's, it can be used both by professionals um, who are doing invasive species management um, and managing properties and uh, even stuff at the regional or statewide level, 
um, but it also can be used by volunteers, community scientists, people working at local levels. Um, so I, I expect there's a wide variety of people on this call right now who can fit into many of those different boxes. Um, and hopefully by the end of the webinar, you'll have some guidance on what sorts of tools are the best for you to use. Um, and just to, to give some more context to the data going into IMAP invasives and how it gets into IMAP invasives. Um, originally, there is the web interface and the mobile app. So the web interface uh, kind of lets you do everything that IMAP um, has to offer. So you could do points, lines, polygons, presence not detected, and treatments. But of course, it's a web interface. You need to be connected to the internet, and we know many of our partners encounter invasive species um, out on the trail or out in a remote area, and they need to be able to record surveys when they're not in the office or connected to Wi-Fi. And so there's the mobile app, um, which is the go-to simple data reporting tool for presence records, not detected records, um, points only. Um, it's the the quick and easy way to report to IMAP out in the field. But we recognize that some of our partners are doing uh, more complex surveys out in the field. Um, and so we've developed a couple advanced field data collection tools to facilitate that. So these tools, um, they're hosted within ESRI apps and they allow you to collect more advanced data, points, lines, polygons, uh, treatment records, uh, sp specific fields for certain types of surveys like rake tosses, for example. Um, so th there's a couple tools we've developed that allow for that sort of advanced data collection, even when you're not collected, in, uh, even when you're not connected to the internet. Um, and regardless of how the data gets into IMAP invasives, um, it's, it's all considered IMAP data. So it will generate email alerts and will be available in the web map services, uh, just like data, just like the data you can see in the interface now when you log in. And so here's a table that we have um, outlining all the different options for submitting data. Um, I don't expect anyone to read through this entire table right now. It is available on our website. Uh, there's a link at the bottom of the slide. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire table right now. I just want you to be aware that this exists and it goes through um, all the different capabilities um, of the different apps so you can compare and contrast. Um, just to give you a quick rundown as we start. Um, so there's kind of two main, main types. There's the IMAP online interface, and then there's our field data collection tools. So the main difference um, is the online gives you all the functionality, but you need, and it gives you all the fields, all the data types available in IMAP invasives, but you need to be connected to the internet. Um, and then all of the other tools are our field data collection tools. So they're built specifically so that you can use them when you're not connected to the internet. And they all follow kind of the same general workflow where you get set up and configure the app while you're connected to the internet. But once you're all set up, then you can go out in the field and collect data. Um, but there's a very important third step. Um, so when you collect the data in the field, it's saving to your phone because you're not connected to the internet necessarily. Um, it's a very important third step to upload those records to the online database when you get back into uh, connectivity. And just to give a brief rundown of the different data collection tools we have before um, going through some examples and hearing from some of our partners, um, the IMAP mobile app is kind of the go-to simple data collection tool. It's used by volunteers as well as by professionals. Um, presence not detected and point only. Um, and there's a, a limited number of key fields that you can fill out with any records submitted by the IMAP mobile app. And then um, I grouped these three together for a second because they're actually all within the Esri Survey123 app. So basically, if you download that app 
and then you download one of these forms, you can then use that to submit data to IMAP bases. So for example, there's the general IMAP survey one, two, three. This was kind of built to have all of the functionality in terms of data collection that the IMAP online interface has, except it's available in an app that you can use outside of connectivity. Um, so it's kind of our general app for any advanced data collection out in the field. Um, and then the other two survey one, two, threes are kind of for specific data collection needs. So SAS Pro, Simple Aquatic Survey Pro, um, that is for uh, partners conducting advanced aquatic surveys. Um, so usually these are uh, PRISM staff, agency staff, and other partners, um, but sometimes it's trained groups of volunteers. Um, for example, there are several groups of volunteers that conduct rake toss surveys, and they use SAS, some of them use SAS Pro uh, because that's very much geared towards um, collecting data from rake tosses. Um, another one, the other specific situation, Survey Winter 3 form is the Forest Pest Data Collection Tool, um, which is geared towards people collecting data on forest pests. So mostly insects like hemlock willi adelgid, um, emerald ash borer. And it contains fields specific to forest health and forest pests. In particular, um, it contains fields for collecting data on hemlock stands. If you are interested in the hemlock initiatives, hemlock prioritization project. Um, so those are the three survey one, two, three tools. And then our last and most advanced tool is called IMAP Mobile Advanced. It's within Esri's Field Maps app, it used to be Collector. Um, and the key difference here, um, it allows you to do presence, not detected, treatments, polygons. Um, and one key thing here is that it's map centric, so you can actually see the data you're submitting on the map um, rather than submitting it in a form and then seeing it on the map online later. You actually see data on the map um, within the app. Um, and this is mostly used by professional partners because um, it's a very, uh, it requires GIS experience. There's a ArcGIS online data review process, um, and there's generally more of a learning curve to using this than there is with Survey123. Um, and uh, that's why it's used by a smaller uh, group of people than many of the other apps on here. And I, I tried to think about how one goes about making a decision on which tool to use. Um, this flowchart probably looks very complicated right now. I'm not going to go through it in detail right now. Um, I just want you to, to try to keep in mind as we talk about the different tools and go through examples, um, try to think about uh, which tools sound like they're a good fit for some of your projects. Um, maybe there's one tool that you'll use for everything. Maybe there's uh, two tools you'll use for different projects that you do. Um, just keep that in mind, because at the end, we should have time for some discussion. And so now we'll go through some examples. So looking at each tool um, and uh, examples of where they might be used, how we usually see our partners use them, um, and what situations they're useful in and what the capabilities are. And so first I'm gonna talk very briefly about the app and the online interface, and then we'll get into some of the more advanced field data collection tools. So starting with online, um, it looks like I, I mixed those up, sorry. Well, starting on online, um, actually, I will start with the mobile app. So the mobile app, that's our simplest tool. It's the go-to reporting tool for simple presence and not detected data. It's the definitely our most popular tool, um, particularly among volunteers. Most volunteers use the mobile app, but it is also used by professionals. So. Uh, for example, for like an incidental finding of a species, um, like they happen to be doing some advanced survey and then they happen to find some other species that's unrelated to that current project, they might just throw in a quick record to IMAP Mesas. 
um, it is important to note that it is points only and, and no treatments. Um, and it does not have all the fields in IMAP invasive since there's so many. So it's kind of meant to be a, a smaller selection of the most important fields to fill out. Um, and that's to help make the data collection process as fast and easy as possible. Um, so, for example, you can fill out time searched, the distribution, and the size of the infestation, which are all super important. Um, and it's kind of hard to give an example for this one because it's it's pretty much most of the data that comes in, um, at least for presences and perhaps not detected. Uh, but the example I'm showing here um, is for hemlock lily adelgid. Um, there are efforts throughout several prisms. Uh, which have volunteer groups uh, surveying for hemoply adelgid and then reporting presence or not detected. Um, so the mobile app is really good for that. It's really good for training a big group of volunteers on how to use and then collecting simple uh, data. Um, and so this this map is from the APIP, the APIP and Capital Region Prism border region um, where they have a big HWA volunteer initiative running right now. Um, and luckily you can see that uh, these are, I think all yellow points, meaning not detected. So um, it's good that they're not finding hemoglobin adulgid in most places within this region. But um, if they do find hemoglobin adulgid, they could report that using the mobile app as well. And most of the records coming in through the mobile app are indeed presences. And now I'll talk about the online. Um, which is kind of the opposite of the mobile app. It has all of the functionality, but it's um, in, you have to be connected to the internet. Um, and so it's often used uh, where, where someone is maybe doing data that they're doing invasive species survey work, and then they're reporting it later, like they're maybe logging onto their computer at the end of the day and inputting that information. Um, so sometimes what that looks like is they'll take notes in the field and then when they get back to the office, they'll use satellite imagery to trace infestations um, or maybe they're inputting data from the past that maybe was collected in some other format and they're just using the online interface to get that data in. Um, in the image, I have an example where someone does a survey for an entire property um, and in those types of surveys, it is pretty feasible to use the aerial imagery or the base map to trace out the boundary that you surveyed. Um, so that's one way that we see the online interface used pretty often. Um, and the, the example I'm showing is a not detected record, but you can do everything with the online. So presence, not detected, and treatment. Um, another example would be reporting a water chestnut pull, or, or you, you conduct a water chestnut pull during the day and then in the evening or the next day, you you go online and you report that as a treatment. I'm at Mesa. It's based on your your notes in the field and your and looking at the satellite imagery. Um, and one thing to note is that it is this online interface is actually mobilely responsive. So you could go out into the field and collect data with uh, this with the online interface just by going to IMAP Mesa's nymfasives.org and logging, logging in, um, and you can report data that way. You just would need to have some good internet connection or phone service. Um, so it's not used that often, but it is used this way sometimes. Um, and if anyone has, has ever tried that, please let me know what your experience was in the chat. And then next, we'll go into those survey one, two, three forms. And I'll start with just some general stuff about R3 Survey123 forms. So Survey123 is an application created by Esri, and we've created three different forms. Um, so if you download the app, uh, you can then get one of these three forms and use it to submit data to IMAP Mesas. Um, so just to reiterate that, like if you search Simple Aquatic Survey Pro in your app store, you won't find it. You have to get Survey123 um, and then use our help resources to get the, the SAS Pro form. Um, let's see, so we have three different forms. We have the general IMAP Invasive Survey123, 
we have the Simple Aquatic Survey Pro, which is for aquatic surveys, and we have the Force Pest Data Collection Tool. Um, and uh, one thing to note with these is that while in internet connectivity, so before you go out to try to use one of these tools, make sure you download the application, Survey123, uh, make sure you get the form you're interested in as well. Um, so if you just download the Survey123 and then go out, you won't necessarily be able to get that form. Um, make sure you do that while you're connected to the internet. Um, and one thing to note is that you'll also need your IMAP person ID to use these Survey123 forms. Um, and that's, that's easy to do when you're connected to the internet and there are help resources to help you do that. And one, one key tip I just want to mention before talking about any of the Survey123 forms, um, using the favorites feature is super, super helpful. Um, so you can enter information like your person ID, your name, um, basic information like that, your organization. Um, instead of having to remember all that and retype it every single time, you can save it as favorite answers and then paste those in every time you do a survey. Um, so this saves a ton of time on the data collector's side um, and also it helps with data quality. So if you type it right the first time and then save that, um, that, will, that means you can have it correct for the rest of the surveys you submit rather than um, having to retype it and potentially making errors. And to then go into some of these Survey123 tools in more detail, I'll start with the IMAP Survey123, and we'll hear from Christopher Williams in a second. Um, but I just wanted to give some framing to kind of how the data works in this Survey123. Um, so within the app, you'll see, uh, within the form, you'll see gray, nested boxes um, that are associated uh, with records that you're collecting. Um, so, so there's the general general, uh, general questions about the infestation, searched area fields, searched area attribute fields. Um, and then also you can add presence records, not detected records and treatment records. And so these all relate to polygons and points that you'll draw within the app. So, there's a searched area polygon and fields associated with that. And then within that polygon, you can uh, collect presence records. Um, so draw presence polygons and indicate the species that are present. Um, you can indicate all the species that you looked for that were not present as not detected records for that searched area polygon. And you can record treatments. Um, so there's a lot a lot you can do with the survey one, two, three. Um, you can kind of go as complicated or as simple as you need. And to give you a more concrete idea, I asked Christopher Williams from the Capital Region Prism to talk about how they have used the survey one, two, three. Uh, so take it away, Chris. Um, thank you, Mitch. You did have a question in the chat box. I hope you want to respond to that before I started because it was a good question. Sure. Um, yes, it is available on our website. I'll put in a link in the chat box for now while Chris talks, but I will also go over that and, and I'll go over how you can find information on any of these tools at the end as well. All right. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm Christopher Williams from the Capital Region Prism. Um, in our office, we have an aquatics coordinator. We have a terrestrial coordinator. We have uh, some hires that seasonal hires that we bring in and we're using almost all of the apps um, that have been presented by Mitch today. And sometimes we use them um, in different situations. And Mitch asked me to talk about IMAP survey one, two, three. And I'd like to first start by saying that folks that are on the call today that may not have uh, a lot of resources and capacity, meaning they don't have an ArcGIS online account, which is a fairly expensive uh, subscription to carry for an agency, or you just have a really small office agency or volunteer network, but some people are a little bit more tech savvy. Um, this is a tool that is 
probably pretty ideal or maybe pretty ideal for uh, you folks, um, especially in terms of if you want to do report uh, your presence um, and treatments, your survey areas in a little bit more detail by drawing a polygon. Um, it's one thing to put a point in on the IMAP mobile advance or IMAP mobile app um, and then go online and then draw a polygon. Um, this is where you can actually get the polygons for the survey presence and treatment all in the field. And so it's kind of like the next step if you don't have a lot of capacity or capability. Um, so just a short little case study here. Uh, you folks are looking at an aerial photograph um, from IMAP Invasives off of their uh, on, online version um, of some polygons that we put in using IMAP Survey 123. This is done at the DEC Five Rivers. Um, and there is a species, a high threat species, a, a tier two species uh, called Mile a Minute. Uh, it's a really aggressive plant that germinates at any time throughout the year and grows literally up to six inches a day in ideal conditions. Um, and the seeds last quite a long time in the seed bank. So we had a report back of a couple plants, I think in 2018 or 2019, we went and did an assessment uh, on site. And because of the aggressiveness of the, of the plant, we decided to just actually treat the plant that day by pulling stems. And part of that process was to document our work and so what you're looking at in the bottom half, there are two purple polygons followed by a yellow polygon. The yellow polygon is basically a trail. Um, it's a, it has crusher run rock on it. it it's fairly stable, easy walking trail. Um, there are some culverts put in to drain water appropriately off the trail. And it's believed that the source of the material is either the crusher run rock or the culvert pipes and the rock supporting it is where the seed source came for the plant. So what we did is an initial uh, survey of the area surrounding the trail where there were reports of the mile a minute. Um, you can see in green some actual uh, confirmation of the mile a minute plant. Uh, the purple areas represent this, the actual searched areas that we did and then treated stems. Um, there is another polygon up in the upper right hand corner um, that was actually the landing area uh, where material was brought in to do some of the trail construction. And so we've been also surveying that area on uh, multiple times throughout the year uh, on an annual basis every year um, to search for the plant to see if any of these seeds uh, germinate and they have new growth. So we basically have a search area polygon and then we've treated within that polygon. Um, so what's really nice is the ease of use of this in the field. Um, you open up the app, um, it'll ask you in the form, your, of course, your ID number, but then you can start entering the data and draw a polygon if needed. Um, when you're drawing the polygon, you can actually stand at a point in the location and the vertices is what we call them, they're the points. Um, you could walk ahead, say, on the trail, and when you got to the end of the area that you want to survey or search, you can then press the screen and get another vertice to show up as an endpoint on that one part of the polygon and then move to a new location and you can draw your polygon that way. So it's a little bit more accurate than being like on the computer desktop and kind of estimating from an aerial photograph. Um, but it's a really nice way to get your searched areas in. At the same time, there are some other additional points in the form where you can add, would you like to add a tree or add um, a presence and you can do that as points or as polygons. And sometimes you can even do it as the actual entire searched area, or you can do it as a smaller component inside the searched area. And then of course, if you do a treatment, you can also do a treatment uh, within that polygon. So we find it to be a really nice tool for its ease of use. Um, it's functional without connectivity. You don't need the ArcGIS GIS on, um, uh, uh, program. Um, and again, you do your searched area, your present and your treatment polygons can be done directly in the field. So it's kind of like the next step. Um, and for you resource managers that are doing a lot of this type of work out in the field, um, I feel that this is a really good tool to start with. 
Um, and it's something that, you know, you can train people to do on your staff or, or as an individual, you can go out and do it as an individual. And it's something that we encourage our partners to do and have taught them to use. Um, Mitch, so that was my short rundown of IMAP survey 123. Perfect. Thanks so much. Um, anyone who has questions can enter those into the chat. I did see one and I'll just address that brief briefly. So. Would the survey 123 forms be too complex to train citizen community scientists to use? Um, uh, the, the quick answer to that is no, it's not too complex. Um, so for community science projects or, or trying to, to train and leverage volunteers to help with invasive species monitoring efforts, um, Generally, the way to go is usually the IMAP mobile app because usually that sort of point presence not detected information is sufficient um, and the data collection process is uh, typically uh, pretty, pretty straightforward for uh, volunteers. Um, but if um, the, the volunteers need to be collecting data more complex than points, uh, for example, then you can definitely consider um, the survey one, two, three forms. Um, so I have known a volunteer to use the IMAP survey one, two, three form, um, and some of the other more specific ones are sometimes used by volunteers as well. Um, and I think I'll move on for now just to keep uh, running through the different options, but we'll definitely continue to discuss the pros and cons of different apps as we go through. Um, so moving on from the general IMAP survey 123, um, here's one of the specific 123 forms that we have set up called uh, Simple Aquatic Survey Pro. Um, the pro was tagged on because it was initially uh, targeted towards professionals. Um, and just to give you an idea of how the, the data schema works in SAS Pro before giving an example of where one place where it was used. Um, so in SAS Pro, it kind of has that same nested box structure that the general survey 123 form has, um, but a little bit different and geared towards aquatic surveys in particular. Um, so you draw a searched area polygon and um, answer some fields about the searched area. Uh, most of them are not required. Um, so really that's a, a comment that can go for any of the survey one, two, three forms. Um, so they have a lot of fields exposed that you can uh, fill out if you're interested in them, um, but you don't have to answer every single field. Um, so within the searched area, you input a target species list um, so the species that you're looking for, um, and also within the search area, you select survey method. Um, so uh, in general, you pick whether it's top, under, or shoreline, um, and then you have some several, you have several specific options, rake toss, neck toss, uh, net plankton, toe, um, trap, and several others. Um, and you can also fill out comments. Um, so the most common one is definitely the rake toss. So that's where you, you have a rake connected to a rope, you throw it out into the lake and you drag it back and see what plants you've found um, and which ones are native, which ones are invasive. Um, so when you pick rake toss, um, then you can add locations within the search area where you conduct rake tosses um, and fill out the whole rake abundance. So that's basically how much plant material is on the rake overall, not paying attention to the individual species yet. Um, and then you also list out the specific species and how abundant they are. Um, and if you do more rake tosses in that area, you can enter those in too. Um, one key thing here is that um, whereas most of our tools are focused 100% on invasive species, with this tool, um, we do have native species on the list as well, um, because with rake tosses, you're usually going to get, you're, you're hopefully not going to get all invasives. In many cases, you are getting native species in there as well, and it's useful to keep track of those. So you can do that in SAS Pro. 
Um, and one, one particularly useful thing here um, is that that target species that you, you list, um, any species on that list that you said you are looking for that species, um, if any of those species were not found in any of your rake tosses, then a not detected record will be generated automatically. And to give you an idea of what that looks like at a certain survey site, um, so, so this map shows some records of rake tosses taken in Jefferson County by Slilo Prism staff. Um, so I, I showed the details for one of the polygons. Um, so you can see it's a it's a purple searched area polygon, and there are two green points in it. And you can't really see it in this view, but there is also a not detected polygon um, that is the same shape as the searched area polygon. So you can see that Eurasian water milfoil and oops, and brittle naiad were detected at those rake tosses. Um, and then in the not detected, you can see the list of all the species that they um, were searching for that they did not find. Um, and so, like I said, this is mostly used by professional partners, but it can be a really good fit for uh, volunteer initiatives where volunteers are conducting rake toss surveys. Um, so it has been used by volunteers in the Adirondacks, for example. Um, and it's be con being considered for volunteers in a couple other projects across the state as well. Um, and one thing I also have not covered yet about the survey one, two, three forms in general. Um, so the IMAP survey one, two, three, the general one, um, those go into IMAP invasives hourly um, with SAS Pro. And the next one I'll talk about, Forest Pest Data Collection Tool, those actually go into ArcGIS online first and then are crosswalked periodically. Um, so if you wanted to go into IMAP quick, uh, the general survey one, two, three form is generally the way to go for this advanced data collection. Um, but, but I'll talk more about that and other components that will factor into uh, your decisions for one app versus another later on. So that was two of the survey one, two, three forms we have. So the general one and then the aquatic one. And then we have one more for specific to forest pest data collection. Um, so this includes, this is generally for forest pests like insects such as uh, emerald ash borer or hemlock woolly adelgid. And so um, I've asked Robert Smith the terrestrial coordinator from Slilo to talk about how um, Slilo has used this tool for their survey efforts. So I'll hand it off to Robert at this point. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm the terrestrial uh, restoration and resiliency coordinator for Slilo Prism. And um, Slilo Prism collaborates with the uh, Hemlock Initiative uh, with our efforts to manage HWA. So as part of the collaboration, uh, we use the forest pest data collection tool for our HWA surveys. Um, the Hemlock Initiative has created uh, something called a prioritization tool, and um, it's included in the as parts of our fields within the uh, this pest tool. And the prioritization tool helps us determine the appropriate management strategies for, um, you know, each uh, area that's infested with HWA. For our other forest pests, uh, namely EAB, uh, we use IMAP Mobile Advanced. Um, since we look for that pest during the, um, you know, summertime, um, when we're uh, doing surveys for many other invasive species and IMA is, what, is a tool we use, so we just do uh, other pests EAB with IMA. Um, the uh, forest pest tool includes um, like many forest uh, stand description fields, like forest type, uh, live crown ratio, crown density, stand composition, tree sizes. So uh, information about the general health and stand composition can uh, easily be gathered. Um, 
the fields have uh, good uh, descriptors in it uh, to help with uh, understanding what the app is asking for. A uh, good example of, of this is uh, for uh, <clears throat> the uh, live crown ratio field. Um, near the uh, field, there is a diagram that you can look at, and it shows the uh, that shows little pictures of trees with the uh, range of live crown ratio to give you some idea of what live crown ratio you actually have out there. Um, the uh, tool also provides fields to describe the HWA infestation, like uh, infestation severity, whether it's low, medium, or high. Um, life stages, so like if you have eggs, and there are adults or both. Um, number of each life found, and um, whether uh, any biocontrolled species was found. If uh, you know, if biocontrol releases have been in the area, uh, done in the area. The tool also has like basic uh, fields that are many of the other apps have that you might be able to use, um, like uh, number of number of crew and hours of uh, worked for both paid staff and volunteer workers, um, as well as the uh, weather details. So you can put that in. Um, the tool is easy to use uh, in the field with either a phone or a tablet. Uh, we have a tablet that we uh, use, and we sometimes use the phone, but our tablet has a uh, Bluetooth connection to a Garmin Glow, um, which is a GPS uh, device, for those that don't know. And the Garmin Glow allow us, allows the app to show our location on the map on the tablet. Um, and within that map, you can create your search polygons. Um, like other apps, such as IMA, there you can take the you can take pictures of the uh, HWA, and then um, attach it to your data set. Um, our data can then be uploaded in field if we have an internet connection, or we can save it as a uh, draft and upload it later on when we do have an internet connection. The um, the data you know. Uh, can later on be viewed in ArcGIS online if you have that, and within that you can, you know, create queries and reports and what have you. Uh, overall, we're um, very satisfied with the, what this tool um, offers us for our HWA surveys. The um, if you look right here, this is one that uh, a search area that I uh, marked off uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is um, at uh, Lake Julia Preserve, which is owned by the Nature Conservancy, and it's like located uh, just to the south of Boonville, north of the Utica Rome area. Now, yeah, but it, it's it's a very solid app we find. Thanks so much, Robert. That was great. Um, that was also a really good point you made um, about where you use this. Forest Pest data collection tool versus IMAP Mobile Advanced. Um, so sounds like you've kind of uh, made the distinction where when you're doing a survey specific for HWA, that's where this comes in handy, this specific forest pest data collection tool. Um, but for other forest pests um, that you're surveying for alongside other species, it's easier to just fold that into your more general data collection using a different tool in the summer. Um, so right, that's a that's a really good strategy and I think other people could employ similar strategies. So thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Thank you for that so much, Robert. Um, and that actually is a pretty good segue into um, our last data collection tool. And I do see a lot of great thoughts and questions in the chat box, and we will definitely get to those. But since I'm almost all the way through all of our tools, I think I'll finish up this part before we get into more discussion. Um, so let's see. Uh, so the last app on our list is the IMAP Mobile Advanced, which Robert mentioned that they use um, in the summertime. Um, so this is 
probably our most advanced data collection tool. Um, here's an example of what it looks like. It's in the Esri field maps application. Um, so in, in the, the left-hand side is a screenshot of what it looks like on, on your tablet or your phone or whatever device you're using to record data. So you can see the searched area polygon in purple, the presence polygon um, in green. So they're saying they surveyed the dark purple area. They found the species in the green area within that, and they conducted a treatment within the brown polygon. Um, so it's a great tool for recording uh, presence not detected and treatment, um, particularly as polygons. Um, and then that goes into IMAP invasives. Um, so I wanted to just talk about kind of the where you would use IMAP mobile advanced versus IMAP survey one, two, three. So so what makes a difference since these are both tools that are that allow you to record polygons, um, they allow you to record treatments, they have a lot of fields you can fill out. So what's what's the difference? Um, so IMAP mobile advanced is map centric um, so it works that you you open the app and you go to a map and you create records and uh, tag species to polygons that are on the map um, you're, you're working kind of from the map um, and one example of where that comes in handy is that as you create polygons you can see those on your map um, so you can see one polygon, then cr go create a new polygon, and you'll see that pop up on the same map while you're in the field. Um, and for instance, one you can have one staff person go out one week and map the infestation, and then an another person the following week could go to that site. Um, they would see that searched area on their on on their map that they're looking at if um, the first person has uploaded their record. And the second person has updated their map. Um, uh, then they would be able to see that, and they could they could tag a, tr a new treatment record right to that existing searched area and presence record. Um, so there is some added power there, um, but it does come with higher complexity. Um, so there's a, a an ArcGIS online review process, um, and so like Christopher mentioned, not not every organization has access to ArcGIS online. Um, so that might be a barrier for some people to use IMAP Mobile Advanced. Um, and, and another thing to consider is how fast the data gets into IMAP. So with the survey 123, the data goes in hourly once you've uploaded it to IMAP. Um, but with, with IMAP Mobile Advanced, it might not go in as promptly. So it kind of sits in ArcGIS online um, until the until the data has been reviewed by the person collecting the data, um, at which point it's flagged as ready for IMAP, and then it can be included in the next uh, cross swap of data to IMAP to IMAP invasives. Um, and just in general, um, IMAP Mobile Advance, which is in the Field Maps app, is a bit more advanced, and there's more of a learning curve. Um, so there is some added functionality, but it does come at a cost. Um, so by contrast, the MF Survey 123, it's survey centric. So instead of seeing a map where you add records, you're, you're um, adding records within a form. Um, and you do, of course, you open a map to create the polygons, um, but it's a little bit different in that you're not going to see all of the records you're creating on a map together while you're out in the field. Um, you can you can look at that when you get back online and can go into the online interface. You just won't be able to see that within your data collection tool. Um, but the data the workflow is a lot simpler. Um, so you you record the data, you upload it to IMAP, and then it goes right into IMAP invasives each hour. Um, and the confirming process that most records undergo um, will happen online once it's uploaded. Um, so, with that, our, our general advice for people who um, are, are undecided um, or, or are still figuring out what data collection tool to use, 
And we suggest at least looking into the survey one, two, three, try that first, see how it works for you. Um, if it's not sufficient or you feel like you need some added functionality and you are a GIS using organization and you have what you need to use IMA, um, then maybe consider IMA, uh, which is IMAP Mobile Advanced. Um, and th this, of course, is I'm speaking mostly to people who are still considering data collection tools. There are a lot of people who already use IMA and the workflow works really great for their process. Um, I'm not trying to convince those people to switch to Survey123. This is more for, for new people. Um, try out Survey123 first just because it's so much simpler. Um, and consider I'm at Mobile Advance if you are needing more beyond what Survey123 has to offer. Um, and I won't go there yet. Um, so actually, first thing I'll do is go back to this table just to kind of summarize the, like, we've just thrown a lot of information at you. Um, so I wanted to point out a couple of the things that you should consider with this table when, um, when you're considering which apps to use. Um, so let's see, like, one thing is the, the functionality of what kind of records you can submit. So you can see those listed in this section of the table with the presence, not detected, treatment, multi-record searched area, and lines and polygons. Um, you'll want to consider um, if you're doing record, if you're collecting data when you don't have internet connection, you'll need to consider the field data collection tools rather than online. Um, one thing to consider is the upload process. So whether it's um, so IMAP and the mobile app are direct, so they go right into IMAP Invasives once you upload them. Um, survey 123 is hourly, and then the rest are um, a regular crosswalk, so not as fast getting into IMAP Invasives necessarily. Um, and so those are the sorts of things to consider. Um, and then to briefly walk you through this, this. This is one example of how you might think about it. Um, so you would think about what records you need to create. Um, if you just need point data, presence not detected, you could go to the mobile app. Um, if you need more complex data, that's when you would consider um, other data collection tools. Um, if, you, if you have internet connection, you could just use the online. But if you need to do this out in the field, that's when you'll consider either our survey going to three forms or the uh, IMAP Mobile Advanced. Um, and so in most cases, it is probably going to lead to that general IMAP survey one, two, three form. Um, so one thing to ask is, are you conducting and recording treatments? If the answer is no, um, in most cases that, that catch all, that, General IMAP Survey 123 form is kind of going to be the catch all for most cases. Um, but there are some specific cases where the uh, other Survey 123 forms might be useful. So, for instance, if you're conducting rake tosses or other AIS surveys, you would want to go with uh, SAS Pro. Um, if you're do collecting data on forest pests, especially hemlock woolly adulgid, particularly, then you would want to uh, use that form. The, Forest Pest Data Collection Tool. Um, and then if you are conducting treatments, um, the, the first place we would point you to is again, that IMAP Survey123 form. But if your organization conducts treatments and uses ArcGIS heavily, um, and you need that map-centric uh, configuration, then you could consider the um, Consider the IMAP Mobile Advanced, and we'll we'll discuss that decision process more in a second. But I do want to make sure everyone knows where they can find more information on these sorts of things. Um, so let me just get my window fixed. Here we go. Um, so on our website, nyimapmasons.org. We have a training tab where we keep uh, self-guided training materials. 
And there is um, our approximately eight uh, most commonly needed resources on here. For instance, um, there's uh, links about how to, to create records online. There's links about using the mobile app. Um, there's our resources on the Survey123 form. Um, we also have this new um, library of all of our help resources, um, which you can get to from this page um, by either clicking the help resources library link or clicking this see all IMAP help resources button. Um, and I'll send everyone a link to this as well after the webinar. Um, but basically it brings you to a filterable table that has all of our resources on it. So if you're specifically looking for information on a certain tool, you could uh, you could use these filters to get there. For instance, if you're interested in the IMAP Survey 123, you would click that. Um, say you want a PDF to look through um, or a webinar, or maybe you're looking for both. Um, so that'll bring stuff up. Um, so one of the PDFs it brings up is um, a PDF that has that table that goes through each of the different tools and what the the benefits and functionalities are. And it also, uh, and then another thing that comes up is the, the usage guide. So if you click that PDF, um, this goes through the whole process. Um, it gives you the link to download the Survey123 form. Um, so there's a lot of resources there. Um, and one thing I'll note is that, uh, let me just get the PowerPoint going again. Um, one thing I'll note is that uh, for, for the Forest Pass data collection tool, um, I haven't gotten the PDF up on that table yet, and we also don't have a PDF for IMAP Mobile Advanced yet. Um, so for these tools in particular, please reach out to us for help. I'll give you my email at the end um, to for more information on those specific tools. Um, and with that, before getting into the questions, I wanted to thank everyone for spending the time uh, to uh, learning about these tools and for considering IMAP data collection tools to get your data into IMAP. Um, feel free to join us again next month where we'll have IMAP user stories from 2021. Um, and please keep in touch by going to our, uh, our website, follow us on social media, um, and you can also contact us at that email. And so now um, we already do have some questions lined up, but um, continue entering those questions into the chat box and we can uh, keep going through them. Um, if anyone has a specific project um, that they want, that they're not sure which tool to use, um, you could share that and I'd be happy to talk through your different options and try to point you to maybe your two best options. Um, that's that would be cool to do as well. Um, so I'm just going to start reading through the questions. So give me one second. I also need to plug in my computer real quick. All right. So one question I see. Um, well, one thing, um, Chris Williams from Capital Region Prism, he he put in a note in the chat to me um, of one point that he missed. Um, he mentions it's important for users to know that um, recorded polygons can be used to monitor progress from year to year um, and as new staff come and go. Um, so that's a very good point um, where um, you can't always get that data from the simple uh, presence not detected points. Um, but if you're using one of these tools, particularly Survey123, to collect polygon data for, for infestations, um, that polygon data can be compared from year to year. So you can see, is it shrinking from treatment efforts maybe, or is the polygon growing because the species is spreading? 
Um, and if it's all collected into this uh, collaborative database, um, that means that those comparisons can be made um, across staff changes. Um, so it's not just information kept on one person's uh, computer, for example, it's something that uh, can be accessed on a collaborative database. Um, one question I saw, um, I, I did see one specific question about the survey one, two, three forms. I think it's very specific and in the weeds, but I think it's something many people will run into. So I will elaborate on it. So the person asked, um, survey one, two, three asks for sign in with ArcGIS online. Um, does one make an account on IMAP invasives or ArcGIS online? Um, so that's a very good thing to talk about. So to use any of these tools, um, you have to create an online account. Um, and for the survey one, two, three in particular, um, when you open the app, it asks you to enter a username and password. Um, so that's not your IMAP account. That is um, ArcGIS online credentials. And many people using our survey one, two, three tools do not have that. Um, so there is actually an option on that screen to just, there's a button that says continue without logging in. Um, and that's what we encourage most people to do. Um, so you just kind of bypass that ArcGIS online login. You don't need to make an ArcGIS online login. Um, and you can just use the app um, and put in your IMAP user ID and record observations. Um, let's see. Uh, so Brian asked, considering what app would be best for uh, community science activities, is there a way I can train folks how to use the app? For example, PowerPoint, I can use over Zoom. Um, yes, if, if people are uh, leading volunteer efforts, um, please feel free to email me. Um, I'll put my email up on, oh, I'll just scroll up one slide. Um, I'm at mavesives at dec.my.gov. Um, yeah, so uh, I have some training materials you can use for some of our apps. Um, uh, one thing we have done sometimes is screen sharing from a tablet or a phone so that people can see the app in action. Um, but I'd, I'd certainly be happy to help people who are uh, leading volunteer efforts and are looking to train volunteers on a certain tool. Let's see, are there any more questions? Um, is there a question about a specific tool, about a specific project that we're working on? Um, does anyone just have something to share, uh, like someone who's used one of these apps, um, any details that that you think might be useful for others to know? Um, and also, uh, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Any, any thoughts like that anyone would like to add? I mentioned this to John. Um, <laughs> One quick point for those using any of the either survey one, two, three or uh, forms or uh, IMA uh, in field maps, we do actually have an offline map, a statewide offline base map that we share. Um, and so it, it can be helpful if you are, you know, in an area without connectivity. Um, you know, because normally it would just essentially be a blank map um, that you would get if you're not connected to the internet. So um, with this uh, document that Mitch is showing, um, we uh, have made this this offline map available to anyone um, and it basically just requires downloading it and then transferring it into a specific location on your device where Survey123 or field maps can uh, 
can read that file and then we'll we'll display it so you'll have some some of that base map uh information um offline so just passing that along um it it can it can be pretty helpful for for having that context of of where you are and this document is available on the the help document table that Mitch linked out to earlier yep if you search base maps it'll come up um yeah thank you so much for bringing that up John and while you're on the line, I was actually going to defer one question to you. So Teresa Draves asks, for the Forest Pass data app, how about collecting gypsy moth, uh, gypsy moth surveys? Um, I know it's uh, HWA is probably the most popular species reported in that tool. Um, what do you think about it being used for gypsy moth surveys? Yes, um, it certainly uh, can be used for that. Um... You know, unfortunately, there will not be a whole lot of specific uh, host species uh, impact uh, fields aside from just our standard um, IMAP fields. Um, but that that may be you know sufficient um, depending on what you're you're trying to collect. Um, so yes, it should be. Um, it's definitely at least possible to to use the forest pest tool for. Um, or a gypsy moth. Thank you. Um, and I see Brittany Hernan from Western New York Prism. She made a comment that might be useful for some of you. Um, for a volunteer training over Zoom, Western New York recently had a virtual HWA survey training and screen recorded the process to download, set preferences, and record a detected and not detected record in the IMAP mobile app. Um, it worked well, and volunteers showed up to the field per field portion with the app set up and ready to go. So thank you. So that's some advice for anyone trading volunteers. Um, and definitely feel free to contact us at IMAP for further assistance on that sort of thing as well. Um, and I'll, I'll see if there's any last minute questions. Um, I'm not seeing any, so at that, I will thank all of you for joining this webinar. Please feel free to contact us. Um, I'll also follow up with um, some of the, the information I've shared uh, today, like links and helpful links and stuff like that. Um, and thank you so much for considering our IMAP Masives data collection tool. It's really helpful for us to get your data into IMAP through one of our tools. It's the, the definitely the most streamlined way to get data into IMAP Invasives. Um, so I hope you all have a great day and I look forward to hearing from some of you.